Welcome to Click Stuff Casualties of War, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Jason Alvey and Alex Coons. How should I do this? Should I be more like relaxed and like? We should. Shocked? We should be. We should be casual. All right. Casual. <laughs> yes. Casual. Just, I was yeah. thinking of just having some like smooth jazz in the background playing while we're talking. <laughs> I mean, this is like uh, this is like the beer and popcorn, like uh, or, or beer yeah, and pretzels, exactly. like like a <laughs> uh, podcast, right? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we can just open it like that. So welcome everyone to Click Stuff Casualties of War. We're still kind of working on that title, but. Casualties of War. It's our new casual podcast, Heroclix podcast, where we talk about Heroclix, comics, casual set reviews, you know, basically everything for everyone that doesn't just want to talk meta all the time. It just kind of everything oh. Dan doesn't want to talk about. <laughs> exactly. We probably won't have <laughs> Dan on this podcast. If we do, it might be like an <laughs> April Fool's episode or something. Um, or we want to talk about Iron Point if he does. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we we could do that when, when we talk about certain comics and whatnot. Well, we can bring them in for that aspect. Um, but uh, I'm your host. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Alex Coos. If you didn't know who I was, and uh, joining me is Jason Alvey. What's up, guys? Yeah, we're just going to talk about the uh, non-meta side of clicks in this podcast. Have a little fun. Yeah, and it and it's you know being casual is kind of one of those hard hard things to do especially like at local events or whatnot because when you play competitively so often it's hard to turn that off and so hmm. and it's hard not to go i don't want to say balls to the wall but you know what i mean like going yeah going ham every time you play and that's kind of what we want to help you with is to come up with ideas that you could try to build around or you know there's a fine line you don't want to cross Right. Some people exactly. just don't have good luck with not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, not gonna I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, there's times at events where, I mean, when I play casually, locally, if it's an event that I know is going to be higher, not higher stakes, but we locally have a... Um, a kind of a not a, gen, a kind of a gentleman's agreement. We know when we're going to go ham. We have specific events to go ham, if you will. And then we have different events where we're like, hey, we want to try this out, or you know, I really want to try this kind of team. And we theme those around maybe some of the OP kits, or you know, maybe a, a, a release day thing where you know you've already bought all of your boosters, and we're saying, okay, it's an X Men event. Let's keep it X Men themed and do these type of things about it. So uh, we kind of try to do something along those lines to keep it casual, but kind of scratch that meta itch every once in a while, if you will. Yeah. I try to yeah. like, I guess some of the, I guess some of the guys have kind of got burnt out around here lately on like playing competitive stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, or most of the guys I should say. And, and so I try to like designate maybe like one week a month where it's like a 300 modern and then, like, I try to, like, just come up with some kind of off-the-wall scenario uh, for the rest of the weeks. It's supposed to be casual or right. semi-casual or, you know, not uh, not just out for blood, uh, if you will. Uh, it doesn't always go that way, as I hope it would. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> now, Jason, do you, uh, do you run events at what store? Are you a judge at, events? At Big Bang Comics, Toys, and Games here in Owensboro, Kentucky. I've been running the Clicks events here since... Uh, around the time Giant Size X Men came out, wow! So, yeah, that's way back in around what twenty eleven ish. Oh, I'm gonna look that up now. Uh, uh, yeah, just just to, to make you feel old, I'm gonna look up Giant Size X Men. Uh, Days of Future Past. What was around yeah. Giant Size X Men? Uh, well, D seventy fifth, like uh, uh, twenty twelve. There's a Fast Forces, Giant Size X Men. Oh, that was that was after the set though. That was that was a good bit after it was released. Oh, here it is. Here uh, it is. Yeah, one twenty uh, twenty eleven. So you were right, twenty eleven. Yeah. Nine years ago. 
Not yet. I started playing back in like oh seven, uh, back when the cards first came out. Ooh, like nice. Like like okay. So like I I used to play Star Wars miniatures. Right, that was my game. That was my jam. Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 I like miniatures games. And there, there was a guy in the local store. Like like we well, didn't. Need, Big Bang was a has is a more recent thing. It started about. They opened that store about twenty eleven. Before that, it was another store called Collectors Mall. And it had a bunch of like vendors, like it was like kind of like a flea market type vendor place, but it had That's comics cool. they, and those. games. Yeah. yeah, well, one one of the guys there sold like miniatures, like singles of hero clicks. God, I remember the awful looking sculpts I used to see. <laughs> and then, oh, I was like, oh god, this game looks like total junk. <laughs> it's like those, 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 those sculpts were just horrible. And then uh, they came out with the uh, the big uh, coming of Galactus event, right? Mm-hmm. If anybody remembers that, um, so that was going to be the big kickoff for like the new version of Clicks with like the cards and whatnot. And the, and the store owners said, "Give." And I, I ran Star Wars miniatures for him back in those days. And he was like, "Look, if I give you the starter set for Legion of Superheroes, and I give you some, like Avengers boosters because it was going to be the Avengers set, will you like learn to play this? And then like we'll run these events." And I was like, "Sure, I'll do it for. He's going to give it to me. I'll try it." <laughs> you know. <laughs> And cause I just kind of got started reading comics about that time, right? Uh, anyway, so it was fun. Like we used to do such weird. We had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I definitely get that. Like we were like running, shotting, using RCE, and, <laughs> and all kinds of crazy weird stuff like that. Because we just didn't know any better. Like nobody there knew. The- <laughs> we were just kind yeah. of learning as we went. Yeah, I think that's just one of the downsides to clicks is just it's such a hard, such a high entry point to really get the game going. Like I know with my kids, teaching them, I've really only taught them. Not I haven't even taught them the full rules. So we mostly have just gone, okay, you can, you know, one in one turn you can either move or attack. Like I just started off mm-hmm. with that. So they and they're. They're like six or seven at the time. And I was like, you yeah. can move and attack, and we're going to work on your addition and subtraction with like attacking and rolling dice. And then we'll start yep. adding in powers, certain ones, sidestep. You know, not going to touch out wit for a while, just going to work on defensive powers and certain things. So, yeah, that's the same problem I run into when I'm teaching anybody. Like, how do you introduce all of this stuff mm-hmm. to somebody? It's such a lot of stuff to learn. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, I always try to start out with the basics of movement and attacking, and then just kind of add in things as you go. But yeah. it, it's 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 hard. It's hard to get people into it. Well, for me, I judge um, locally. I've bounced around for a couple stores. I used to. I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I used to judge at the store called Epicos. Uh, but we didn't really, I judged there for about six to eight months, but just didn't take off. We have about three stores or we, at the time that was mm-hmm. the third store to really run events and not enough people to support running events at three stores. <laughs> so, right. um, recently though, for the past, I think almost a year now, I've been at a store called game on that I help run events. We run a, a win a map. We have two stores locally, uh, uh, Game on and Infinity Flux, uh, and they work together on like local co- uh, conventions. Like, it's two stores that just work hand in hand in a lot of gaming things. It's really awesome. And so cool. I do uh, Hero Clicks there. I run the events there. That um, we do. We split a win a map. Basically, we do a win a map one month, and then the next month is at Infinity Flux, and then the following. You know, we alternate months of buying a kit. We usually run the sealed ones, and they usually run the construct- uh, constructed ones, but we alternate it. We do pre-releases as WAMs or Wida Maps, stuff like that. Um, and we try to do, you know, I try to have some fun events. It's just unfortunately, you know, and sometimes it's hard to get people to come to just the fun, mm-hmm. casual event, unfortunately. Especially because, you know, they're spending money on new sets and you know, with the frequency of how often we're getting sets nowadays, it's one month. It's right. like, okay, what new set this month, a uh, month and a half later, another new set. And you have pre-releases and releases. It's like, when do I have time to do just a normal yeah, casual I mean, event? We just got Captain America and like what pre-release for like Justice League is like what the end of March. Like, well, uh, as long as we don't all die from the coronavirus, and sure. 
right? <laughs> Unless we get infected <laughs> with it from getting open a new boosters of clicks from China. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, things were delayed, so uh, I'm concerned. Yeah. Like locally, uh, this might be the opportunity to run a, a bunch of casual events because it's I we just don't have anything in March that I can think of besides maybe uh, we have some of those X Men things maybe the 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 uh those the painting ones the ones you paint oh yeah yeah the uh, deep cuts deep cuts yeah those yeah. are super sweet super sweet i love being able to paint um i'm just now getting into the painting scene i'm doing it with some D &D minis and uh, i can't wait to actually buy some and just paint them to reflect some of the different yeah. comics that i've read and just play off yeah, of that. i bought them i'm just not gonna paint them <laughs> Nah, I'm just it's gonna fun. take. The, I'll just put the painting sculpts off my Regenesis figures onto those go on those bases if I'm gonna use them. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, fair. Goodness knows we have enough of those Regenesis figures. So yeah, like I draw the line at like painting and putting together miniatures. Like if it's not pre-painted, okay, and put together, I'm done with it. I'm just. It's, nah. I tell you, it's very therapeutic. It's therapeutic being able to sit there and just like put some music on. And just sit there and paint. I mean, I know. I mean, you have a bunch of kids. I have a bunch of kids. It's, it's we yeah. don't get all the time in the world. <laughs> like if I had a garage to like go hide in and do that, I'd probably be cool. But I don't. So and we yeah. just recent. We actually just recently converted our third bedroom. Um, I, that's where I'm at now. We moved my office, which was downstairs, mm -hmm. up to here, and we kind of made it a pseudo craft room because my wife wants to do some sort of crafting also. And so, and I wanted to start getting into painting some stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's nice. I have a closet now where I keep all my clicks. I have a, like a nerd closet that I keep my board games and my clicks. And I can actually looking at it, I could stand in it and relax and just, it sounds weird that I'm just going to hang nice. out in the closet, but I could yeah, close well, the door and keep my kids out. So that's, a, yeah, that's a plus. I'll just mail you my sculpts and you can paint them and mail them back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, well, I'm just starting out, so they may not be very good. So. That's okay. You're better than I am, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. So, so for the show, um, we are going to have a couple different segments. It's not going to be like sudden death where we do very specific like news and whatnot. But we wanted to touch base. We wanted to be able to. Um, well, one thing we're going to talk about, the first segment we'll talk about is called Keyword of the Episode. So what we're going to do is we are picking one keyword, and we are going to build a 300-point modern team and a 300-point golden age team. And remember, we're building for casual, so we could talk mm -hmm. about while we're building what that means to us. <laughs> because, if, <laughs> I mean, if it was Dan, it would be obviously a lot different. Um, but for us, it's... You know, we're not saying pick bad figures, but, you know, we might tailor and pick different mechanics that may not, you know, yeah. excel in the meta, but it's still a really like, cool mechanic. Yeah. Well, I guess when I'm building, like, what I would call a casual team, mm -hmm. like, I don't even worry about the mechanics. Like, I just want to play the particular figure. Like, I want to play this character, or I want to play that character. Oh, and yeah. I, I just go with it. I don't even, like, try to look for synergy between them. Um, I just want to team these dudes up a lot of times. <laughs> and, that, and that's actually going to make this, hopefully, this show perfect because I'm the opposite way. I like seeing different types of, like, oh, for example, like Baron Zemo generally in most sets does some crazy synergy stuff. And I like mm -hmm. that. So I'll see yeah. that synergy and be like, all right, how do I want to build around this cool synergy stuff that he does? And I build around that. I don't necessarily be like, oh, well, I want to recreate uh, one of the Masters of Evil team or Thunderbolts. Like, I, I do. I want to build around the keyword, but I don't want to build based off of comic number 24 out of blah, 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 blah. Like, well, I see, go off of cool <laughs> things. So. That's, what I, that's what I did was I picked a lineup from the comics. And that's what I built my team. There you from. go. Yeah. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. I've been at plenty of different local events, and I find those are the most fun events to try to build for is when someone says you have to build it's uh, 400 points here's the list of keywords you could choose from and mm -hmm. you have to be comic accurate and i find it's so infuriating but so much fun too because it's like okay let me find that one rogue comic panel 
that has like all these people in it uh like i think i saw one of the like i was building for one event that i was trying to get faust uh and a bunch of the um with Secret Society of Super Se- Secret, Yeah, Secret yeah. Society. But yeah. Frost isn't in a lot of them, though. Like, with a lot of people. The, I found one comic panel where it's... Uh, oh, shoot, man, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, the the alternate Justice League people, who are they? Um, are you talking about, like... Uh, oh, the, the uh, Crime Syndicate. Crime Syndicate, yes. yes. There was a comic of the Crime Syndicate coming into uh, the main Earth. And basically, I think it was them, and they were running things or something, and they gather all of the, the I can't remember the name of the story. I'm gonna have to look it up while we're. That was like right before, like was Trinity War, right? Like yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it was right around that time frame. Oh gosh, yeah. It was a specific storyline. It was like uh, it's not darkest something, but it's oh man, I'm gonna. Yeah, I can't. It's on our um, um, time. Forever, forever evil. Maybe that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that is it. Yes. Yeah, because th- they have a scene where they. Yeah, it's forever evil. It's where they because the Justice League is dead. They come in and they try to act like they're the uh, the Justice League and try to take things over. And they get the, the crime. They try to gather all the crime syndicate people. And so there's a big yep. panel with like everybody, like all of oh, yeah. uh, all, all of the. the so secret society everyone and so i was trying to use yeah. that to say hey here's black adam here's fouls here's this here's this and and, and it makes me actually mm-hmm. go out there and like i mean i read the forever evil series and it was yeah. entertaining i wouldn't have done that normally if it wasn't for building a hero clicks team like right that's, that's what i love about it like for me i was never a comic reader I, you know, I watched the, the TV shows and I might read a comic every once in a while, but I didn't go out and like actively buy it. It's clicks brought me to comics, not comics brought me to clicks, I guess. Mm, I think I, I guess I was in the click into comics before I really got into clicks or right about the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess I started reading comics because my, like my mother was in a hospital at the time. Like she'd had some stuff go on and I needed something to do. I was sitting there like just right. wait you know waiting so i picked up some at the local store and then i just i just kept reading them ever since like <laughs> it's, you know kind of yeah, an odd way, it, odd way to get into it but that's how that's how it happened for me yeah and nowadays if you're still on the fence anybody listening still on the fence about reading comments i mean it's easier now than ever before i mean you can all the marvel comics well most of the marvel comics are on marvel unlimited you pay 10 bucks a month mm-hmm. even less sometimes to just read all the comics you want. You can go to Comixology or something like that yeah. mm-hmm. to read the Justice League ones. And we're only going to talk about legal ones, just to be safe. <laughs> there are other methods you can go out and read them for free, but I like to support Marvel and DC and pay those artists. So, because mm-hmm. I think DC, I think DC does take a chunk out of Comixology. I think they rely on the Comixology to do it i think they work with them yeah i, think... I wish, they, wish they had their own service like marvel unlimited but they've never yeah marvel yeah. unlimited if you've ever been on the fence i wish they maybe one day they'll sponsor a show because i love Mar- marvel unlimited it is yeah. amazing i i mean we'll talk about it we'll talk about it a little bit later we have a segment where we talk about comics um but definitely look into marvel unlimited so jason Masters of Evil. That's our keyword of the episode. Yes. What is your 300 point modern team? Okay. Well, I like Masters of Evil. I, I like playing them just in general because they have kind of the weird, not kind of the B villains a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the perfect you know? way to describe them. Yes. Yeah. They're not. They're not like the A level Thanos and Doctor Doom and whatnot. These are like the. These are like the street level guys. So I was just looking through them and I was like, okay, I can. The second iteration of the Masters of Evil that Baron Zemo uh, helmet or the new Baron Zemo ran, uh, the, all of the characters are in the new Captain America set. Okay. So I've got Atlas at twenty five, mm-hmm. Fixer at fifty, uh, Moonstone at forty five, Set Mark X at seventy, uh, Baron Zemo Super Rare at forty five, okay. and then and then the Super Rare Songbird at sixty for an even three hundred points. And uh, that's that takes up that whole, the whole group there 
Um, that they 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 appeared back in like Amazing Spider Man, uh, in the Avengers back in the late eighties. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I like so, that. I like that. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, I have a lot of the similar people because there's, I mean, there's only a finite amount of my Masters of Evil. I, I did right. not build mine. I, I now going forward, I'll probably preface this. I probably won't build most of these comic accurate. I rely on the keyword to kind of be comic accurate, even though I know it isn't. Um, mm-hmm. And those all actually have the keyword at the theme team. So right, right, yeah. And that and that's the point of this segment is we are going to make sure everyone that we mention has that keyword so that way if you're playing in an event that says masters of evil keyword only these are all going to be theme team these are all going to be named theme team so mm-hmm. keep that in mind we're not going to build anything that's non-themed these are going to be themed because theme to me makes it it's not i know it's not comic accurate but <laughs> I, I i just mm-hmm. in my head it's like these are the masters of evil sure they may be at different points of time but they're still masters of evil. Like I like to think they would work together if they all converged into one timeline. Sure. So yeah. for me, for me, I was very similar. I did the super rare Baron Zemo. He's incredibly good. Um, because he's got the leadership. He's got a wit. He, he makes it where if you he succeeds on leadership, then that means masters of evil could choose a, a team ability and just have that team ability also. So you can choose Sinister Syndicate or something. To, pass around or you could choose uh avengers initiative i mean i know that doesn't make sense comic wise but right um but it, it, the name of the power we will take the place of the avengers in their hearts i mean choosing avengers initiative it that's might it. actually make sense yeah i mean that's uh you know, they were kind of uh trying to be the heroes at that point right so exactly or pretend exactly. they were yeah so um i'm building the way i built the team is Obviously, I'm, I'm not trying to build meta, but I'm still trying to put good pieces on it. And obviously, Alex Wilder, you could argue, is probably one of the best, I guess. Oh, he's great. I love that figure. Yeah, he's probably one of the best figures out there. So when I think of just Masters of Evil, I want to make sure I have certain things covered, and he covers a lot of it. So... It, this is yeah. kind of once again that fine line. All right, is that are you building meta? Well, no. I've if I'm building just a general team, I'm looking for certain things anyway. Does what do I have access to prob? Do I have access to perplex or outwit? And so Alex Wilder, Masters of Evil, he has those, and I mean he can only use two of them, but still really good. So I have him, Baron Zemo. Um, I went with Fixer because I think Fixer in general in this set is incredibly good. Uh, just having the TK, yeah. having being able to uh, that perplex sh- power, the per- per- uh, perplex power is great. Um, I mean, would he see actual play? Man, I don't know. I-, I like the way he plays currently. I think he would be great on this team because he can move uh, this next person out pretty far. He also has got that. Uh, he probably won't ever be attacking. He's there for the perplex and he's there for the TK mostly, but he's going to be moving. Um, I try to avoid picking chases, and no, it's not Ultron. Mm-hmm. But I could not resist picking Absorbing Man. Oh, I, yeah. I actually really like this Absorbing Man just in general, and I actually just pulled him yesterday. Uh, and I'm really torn about whether I want to try to sell him or not, because <laughs> I really like this Absorbing Man. I like the like this yeah. is this is how his power should have like should be. He absorbs adjacent terrain and he gets yes. good powers from it so it's not just oh he gets to like he gets toughness or he just gets it like he gets good stats yeah I, I, he's really cool i, I, I do kind of want him but I, yeah i don't have him yeah he's and he's he's i don't know just looking at it, it's like that's and he picks it once and you don't have to pick again he just gets it until you pick again so that's, i could start really out nice yeah, so I could start out and maybe I'm next to water. And so I pick water and that gets him uh, improved movement, water, poison, shape change, and damage plus two. So he's at six damage just right out the gate. Like That's cool to me. And having Baron Zemo there to kind of help with the leadership, uh, Fixer to TK him out. I could perplex him maybe with Alex Wilder and just have him be my wrecking crew if you will <laughs> and have yeah. him going out there um that puts me at 
uh like 240 so i also picked up songbird i know she's kind of a mm -hmm. key i mean uh, when i think of songbird i know i think more of thunderbolts the masters of evil but uh, right i have her for the prob and in general i just like songbird she's probably one of my more favorite masters of evil thunderbolts characters but she's always conflicted about like, how things are going like whether she needs to step up and because she was a leader for a while i, I am i right i think I'm so make that up like i feel like she led the thunderbolts for a while and then like kept going back and forth with zemo i haven't read a ton of thunderbolts comics so i can't really say for sure i know gotcha yeah, yeah I, I, i'm thinking more along the um around the time of dark rain i think that's the time i'm thinking of okay when uh when Osborne took over and they had the Dark Avengers and then the oh, Thunderbolts yeah. were kind of thrust yeah. out as to help in those instances. That, that that's the time period I'm thinking of. So <sighs> okay. that's my three hundred point modern. I mean it has I mean I think it's I feel like it's solid because Absorbing Man is could be a, a tank and then you have enough support behind him and a secondary attacker. When I'm building any team, meta or casual, I'm looking at Who's my main attacker? Who's my secondary attacker? I don't like tent poles because I I I personally don't do well with tent poles. I just lose. <laughs> I, I make bad decisions and I'm like, I have no follow-up. So I always like who's my main attacker, who's my secondary attacker, and then what support or other people do I have with them? Right. Okay. And I liked your team too. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty uh, I had a good time building these. Uh, so like, I guess we want to go into our Golden Age team. Oh, man. I, so I will preface this by that. I don't we didn't talk about this before we built these. Um, when we talk Golden Age casual, I'm assuming we are not going beyond like carded area beyond Oreo base. Well, era, unless you did, which is well, OK. No, mine are all mine are all like mine are plugged. I don't know if they're all Oreo or not. Uh, but I do, I don't think they are, but they're all carded. Um, all right. So we'll say for the sake of the show and sorry for everybody who likes non-carded hero clicks. Um, we'll say it's going to be carded and beyond because it's, I don't know enough of the non-carded and soaring and all of that stuff to really build uh, with those. Yeah. No, you don't sorry. have to worry about that, that game tank's gone. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to do carded and to now. So. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, do you want me to go first? You went first last time. It doesn't matter. I can whatever. Okay. I, can, I, can, I can go. All um, right, go ahead. So I was looking through stuff, and I was like, uh, Secret Avengers was one of my favorite comics back uh, oh, when yeah. it came out. Uh, I really enjoyed that. And they ran into uh, a, a, a group called the Shadow Council um, that worked out of a country named Bagalia. It was mm -hmm. kind of like, sort of like Madripoor, but not in the X-Men world, right? Right. So... Um, and they had kind of an evil, evil council there, and and that was they were a big, uh, a big uh, uh, villain for the Avengers. So the Shadow Council had a Masters of Evil, and these are like not even B list, probably these are more like C list guys, probably, <laughs> 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 which is even better. So uh, I have um, Chaos War Max Fury. At okay, 60, at sixty nine points, Max Fury. If you don't know who Max Fury is, he is an LMD of Nick Fury that went rogue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, All right. Uh, from Hammer of Thor, I have By Beast. Uh, if you've ever, I don't know, I don't really know the backstory on By Beast, but he's like a big Hulking dude with two heads. <laughs> and uh, um, so he's wait, kind of the. But time yeah. out. So th uh, this is Secret Avengers for those yeah. who haven't read it. Yeah, like this, the, they had a like they had just tons of villains that were hiding out in this country basically because. The government like wouldn't support anybody coming in and do anything to them. They kind of just kind of could do what they wanted. Um, okay, I see. Which, it. I see it now. I'm looking at yeah, up. yeah. The Shadow Council kind of ran the country, so these guys just kind of harbor there, looking for jobs. We didn't have to worry about any heroes bothering them, that sort of thing. Um, so I had Buy Beast at 73 points uh, from Deadpool set. I don't know if anybody remembers Black Talon. Uh, he had the uh, <laughs> he could he had the like he could friendly mind control characters on your team. <laughs> kind of yeah, see, because he's wearing the chick. He's the chicken yeah, suit looking he's guy. A chick yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's I remember him. Wow. Yeah, he was sixty points. Uh, then had Eel, uh, which is one of the. Uh, I think he was one of the uh, Serpent Society. 
I think guys, I think from back in Captain America set, mm-hmm. a 64 points. And then well, I guess the, the newest piece that I have is from Earth X, the Tinkerer, um, 30 points for it came out at 296. Like, I don't know if they, they were ever in a, in a panel together, but they were all kind of in that, in that same world at the time, all part of that council. They wow. had a ton of, they had a ton of villains in it. So <laughs> I, just, I just, I just, these guys just look kind of good. Like, like, uh, the Bi Beast is kind of the muscle. Uh, Eel's a tie up piece. He's got poison plasticity. Uh, the Tinkerer was, uh, he's kind of the support piece. Max Fury has, is leader and has the outwit and whatnot. So, Black Talon, I just, I just, he's just fun. I mean, he doesn't want to do the chicken suit <laughs> that mind controls people on their team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could, he can mind control Bi Beast and just send them out there. So, yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Like, that's the one aspect I wish I need to improve on, and that's why I'm reading more comics is to get those comic accurate. Like, because if you're if you don't read comics, you're kind of subject to either staying within the set or going with like whatever Fast Forces WizKids releases. Because that that's yeah. it. If you don't know your comics super well, that's kind of what you're stuck with. So, yeah. um, so for me, I went more uh, less comic accurate. I I kind of did what you said you used to do or you do. I, I went towards figures I just generally like. Um, mm-hmm. And I just, I have always, always enjoyed the Super Rare Baron Zemo from Sinister Foes of Spider Man. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The 90 point one. He has yeah, always been like, my favorite. The one he gives him like sidestep, right? Is that what he does? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so Masters, Masters of Evil and Thunderbolts, everyone gets basically sidestep and plus one to attack. Uh, he has leadership and now wit, and uh, he can basically everyone around him can remove a token if he succeeds on leadership. Yeah, but I, I, I just liked like he's also good as a piece. I mean, twelve attack, only two damage, but he has blades, so he can, you know, he can still go mess some stuff up. But I just liked that little. He really does change a lot of figures on the Masters of Evil team, just because he has the ability to be like, hey, now everyone has sidestep. Um, yeah, and plus really one to attack value. Yeah. Uh, so I went. This isn't too old. So sorry, everyone who was looking for a bunch of old stuff for me. I'll probably be a little bit more modern. Uh, well, pseudo modern. I really liked Claw from Avengers Defenders War. Uh, he's oh, yeah. hundred. He's the one who could pick a power or pick a standard attack power. Um, he already can use sidestep, so he doesn't really benefit from the whole sidestep thing. Uh, but I like him being able to pick a power i thought that was and he's 110 points and he's claws uh, the only thing i've ever read of claw because i have not read a lot of masters of evil unfortunately was there was a time it was him it was a spider-man comic so you might know this it was it had to do with carnage um him and some scientist what's the dot Oh, shoot, what's the not Doc Ock? What's another scientist person? But Kurt Connors or the Lizard? Uh, he's, he's a scientist. Maybe the, I think like, it is the uh, Wizard. Who is the Claw's dad? Is it the his dad? Uh, oh gosh, dad? I don't know. I don't know if it's his real dad. He considers him his dad. Oh, uh, blue, blue, blue. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Um, Google Claw now. Like. <laughs> yeah, because I was reading. A bit of carnage stuff here. He 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 is enlisted by the wizard. So you're right. It is the wizard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was a couple comics where he was enlisted by the wizard because they were going to capture capture carnage to basically add him to their latest version of the frightful four. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, and ultimately, the wizard tried to control carnage, and it obviously didn't work. So uh, he <laughs> he brings in uh, Carl Malice. I don't know if you know who that is. That's no, just, uh, he's, a, he's a mad scientist that's been in Marvel comics. He brings okay. him to help control the symbiote. It doesn't work. So basically the carnage bar- bonds with malice and the wizard creates something he calls superior carnage. Ah, and okay. He creates basically the frightful four or three, I guess he counts <laughs> carnage and this guy is one and two. And they fight, <laughs> they fight superior Spider-Man and all this stuff. And it's, claws in there and it's that's the only comic i've ever read with claw in it um that may be one of his last 
comics because he hasn't been in a lot of recent ones. Um, but definitely, it was a good storyline. I don't know if the storyline has a. It's not its own thing. It's just part of Superior Spider Man. That's all I know. Um, okay. I I was reading it during the. <laughs> I was going to talk about this a little bit in the comics portion, but I, I've been reading a little bit, getting into Absolute Carnage, which is a newer event. Yeah. And unfortunately, not all of it's out of Marvel Unlimited. There's usually like a six to eight month delay, so that way they can actually sell comics. Right. And so I've been reading through Comic Book Hound, I think is what it's called. Comic Book something. Okay. And it basically, you, you should check it out. It's definitely a. Uh, yeah, I haven't read any of that, so yeah, I need to do that. It's 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 a definitely a cool storyline where, uh, he's it's only like a couple of issues, but he basically brings Carnage back. Carnage in the, insane. I've been reading all this in preparation for the new set we get in August, which has which is going to be the like Carnage Venom Spider Man set that we're getting. So. I've been trying to read up on Carnage because he's just a nasty, nasty, crazy, yeah, yeah, crazy character. Just to read how many times he's died and come back, or uh, Cletus or Cassidy, whatever his name is, Cletus Cassidy, yeah, yeah, Cletus Cassidy. How many times he's like died, had his legs blown off or whatever, and he's still alive somehow. Yeah. Someone brought him back from the dead. It's crazy, yeah. Um, and that's the yeah. beautiful thing about clicks is that I have a giant Carnage or something. It's like, oh, what is this about? I'll go read about it and figure out why he's so crazy. So. I, I like the good version of Carnage back when, like, you remember when they did the inversion thing? You remember yes. what I'm talking? Yes, like, uh, that's Carnage, what the... Carnage, got Carnage and Sabretooth, and, like, they were, like, all good guys. <laughs> was, that the, uh, was that the Onslaught, like, when the Onslaught came back? And they it was, just, like, the red, it was, like, Red Onslaught, like, yeah, Red Skull yeah, yeah. took Professor X's brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, they, and all the good people kept, became bad, and the bad became, yeah. yeah. It was a weird event, but it was cool at the same time. Yeah, I like I like the good version of Carnage. It was that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that was basically that was only two hundred points. I added Fixer on there, Alex Wilder, because I'd like the support pieces. Funny enough, I also added just for kicks and giggles an ID, and okay. I added the Swordsman ID because <laughs> he's ah, Masters okay. of Evil. And I was like, if anybody's gonna call Swordsman in, it's probably a Masters of Evil team. So I wanted to be thematic. So right. I was like, I think, I'll allow myself one ID. I think I can kind of justify the IDs like that as a guest star, like a cameo appearance, right? Right. Yeah, you know, uh, especially with all the golden angels that we have. Available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like if you're if you're building an Avengers or Shield team and you want to call in a Wolverine, that makes sense because that's what Wolverine did. He randomly shows up when Fury calls him or when he feels like, hey, I'll help out. I'm the only X Men that'll help out. Or I'll be the yeah. X Men representative for the Avengers, so you know that that I think that's completely justifiable. Yeah, if you just can't make the points work, it's like cheap enough that you can slam put somebody else in there, you know, that so, you want in there, but you couldn't so, get out. Of so tell me this: this is this is a touchy subject, I guess. When it comes to building casual, how do you feel about special objects? Do you keep those to comic accuracy? Mm. Like, I don't know. I probably don't myself personally put them on my team. Like, if I'm just playing a casual game, I just kind of stay away from objects altogether, usually. Yeah. Like, when I build events at the store that are supposed to be casual, I usually just have the stipulation, characters only. <laughs> yeah. No no age, as we call No additional game elements is what we usually call it. Yeah. Now, like, this week we had, a sp you could have a special object, but they had to be, like, the character had to have used them in the comics. Yeah. I, so. I yeah, I like that also where it's like show me where someone actually got access specs and you can use it, which is basically yeah. nobody. <laughs> but yeah, at like the same I... time uh, Mjolnir. All right, well you could play a cat with Mjolnir. He doesn't have to have the mm -hmm. sculpt, but you could play a cat with Mjolnir and it'd probably be okay. Yeah, I played cat with Infinity Gauntlet this week at the local oh, game. Nice. Yeah. Never played him, so it was fun. Yeah, and I think that's what I kind of, why I like playing different special objects is because, you know, maybe WizKids created the perfect figure, sculpt, everything, but it's just missing something that that figure probably should have had. Like, if mm -hmm. it has no move and attack and it's a mobile character, 
Like, if there's a beast or something that just has a leap climb, okay, well, that kind of works for beasts, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I want him to have something else. The then I might charge. play something. Like, yeah, <laughs> so it's like I might give him something that gives him charge or something. Yeah. And, I mean, it's no. a lot harder in Golden Age to play the older figures or the older special objects, the relics, because you have to roll for them and you can't afford that half the time. So. Yeah. Yeah, the new objects are way better than what we used to have. I do agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't fit uh, what's his face on every t- on every theme team. Uh, what's his name? Uh, split lip. Split lip. Yeah, you can't yeah. fit split lip on every team. No, definitely not. Though you can make him an Avenger or Shield person now. <laughs> yes, that's true. Steve Rogers yeah. can bring split lip wherever you want to go. <laughs> or like that? Are they? Yeah, like the AOA Magneto Chase could like make him an X Man. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Oh man, he could also All be right. a legion. He could also be a legion of superhero uh, with some of that old, old, old pieces. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, it, there, yeah, that'd be interesting to talk about. It's just the different. And we we don't have to do it now. We could do a different episode, but talk about the different figures that can add people to teams and how you would play that. Like, would you actually feel comfortable playing? like an AOA Magneto that brings in some random person because most of the people and mm-hmm. heroes are dead in an age of apocalypse. Like mm-hmm. that's just how it works. So it's like, it doesn't make sense to be able to bring in an iron man or bring in a right. Some, Cause he, he's dead from what I understand. They kind of touch on that. They kind of touch on, I think they talk, talk about how most of the heroes I think are dead and they just leave it at that. But so um, let's talk a little bit. This is going to be the next segment called Local on the Eights. So okay. with the Local on the Eights segment, we talk about our local formats. We kind of already done this a little bit. And what we're going to do going forward after this episode is we're going to take formats from you guys. We're going to put out a little question thread um, a day or two ahead of the uh, recording. And we're going to ask you to send us your local format. So some say I've got an event coming up in two weeks and it is blah, 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 400 point uh, Marvel only or whatever. And we're going to help you build a fun, casual team. Like we would basically build a team we would bring to that event and help you out building a team. Cause sometimes people don't have time for team building. Some people don't like team building. Um, and they just want to be able to say, Oh, I have those figures. I'll, pack them up and bring them so that's what we're going to do going forward but being our first episode i figured we would go pretty vanilla um Mm -hmm. so 300 point modern is basically the common staple for most events and because this is clicked off casualties of war or as i said i told jason i would say multiple times cacao c-o-c-o-w cacao um I like it's like a candy bar name or something. Like. Exactly. Well, there you go. Future branding. Future branding. Um, yeah. <laughs> since it's since we're casual, we're not bringing fifteen Wendigos for sport and saying, "Yeah, this is what we're gonna play." We build teams that are fun, maybe comic accurate, maybe just you want to use fun mechanics. So, Jason, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but okay. let's say you are playing three hundred point modern. You're not building for meta. This is just simply a, uh, you kind of get an idea. Maybe mm. maybe you're going to a different event or a different area because I know you run the event. But say yeah. you, you're doing 300 point meta, you know you got a bunch of new people coming. And you know at new people events, you kind of kind of tone things down and you're like, okay, don't bring the right. hard hitting ones. Bring a, a fun team and maybe introduce some mechanics. But you know, tone it. We like we say, we say tone it down. No cheese, as some people say. No, no don't cheese. Bring, don't cheese in it. So, if you were to <laughs> show up to one of these three hundred point modern events, uh, what what kind of teams would you bring? It doesn't have to be comic accurate if you don't want it to be. But what what is um, what is some figures that you've been wanting to play in the modern that you're like, eh? It would get swamped if I took it to meta, but it'd probably be okay if I took it to you know, a, a fun event on the 300 point. Oh, I'd probably be some kind of Spider-Man team. <laughs> like, uh, I just, I like playing, I, I love Spider-Man. I think everybody knows that if you listen to the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so, like, and, and, and I don't know, Spider-Man family, not necessarily the 
keyword like to build around or whatever. So I think of right now I'd, I'd, I'd play Spider Man of some sort, like the new Spider Man. Yeah, Captain America. Say I haven't played him yet. Uh, he seems pretty fun. Um, like I don't even know what else is modern right now. I think the last one I played had like I had like Miles and Gwen the con exclusive. Yeah, and I had uh, like the Iron Spider uh, AVPI because he's really awesome. <laughs> Miles and Gwen would be fun. I have I have yet to play mine. They're really fun, and I I, I played uh, with them. I had the Super Rare Prime uh, Spider One uh, from yeah, uh, she's good from Sink of Wars Battle Wars. She is yeah, she's pretty fun too. The pick a power thing is pretty neat on her dial. Uh, like I don't know, she's not like an offensive powerhouse or anything like that, but I, right, she's really good. She's a good support piece because she can just kind of get whatever she need, needed. Um, right. And that puts me pretty close to like that's put me pretty close to like three points. It puts me over actually <laughs> if I'm looking, if I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> I just, I just hey, that's play a, that's a, like eighty five. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's okay. I mean, it's okay to be a little bit over. We're just talking about. I put you on the spot, so I mean, yeah. it's not really fair to put you on the spot like that and be like, "Hey, yeah. what are you going to play?" I mean, for me, yeah. if I were to play uh, something. That I know synergizes pretty well. I'd probably, I know this just happened last summer into fall. I would try playing a Jean Grey School of Higher Learning or a Utopia team outside oh, yeah. of the Regenesis event because the deep cuts also have those mm-hmm. keywords. Um, and yeah. we got um, recently we got Pixie uh, from the WKO, and she has Jean Grey School of Higher Learning. So you could play yeah. her to be your taxi. At 45 points and she's got props so she's actually really really great for the team and then i could play some of these other figures that you know you only got to see these figures in a like glass bubble you know we only right. play these other regenesis i want to see how these do with the alternate cards going out into the real world if you said if you will so i mean i'm yeah. playing probably the deep cuts wolverine no i'm probably playing the real wolverine i, I would play 120 wolverine 100 percent yeah um but I'm, i'd probably play you got Kitty, you got Beast, uh, Rachel Gambit. Summers. Rachel Summers, this is the free TK Rachel, so I might play yeah. the free TK Rachel. Gambit, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Iceman, Angel, uh, Cannonball and Warbird. Cannonball. I don't know if I'd play the Chases. I might play... Uh, let me look at the, the Deep Pets Cannonball. Uh, I don't think blocking. Can... Force Blast for free. It's not bad. Charge. Yeah. I'd have to play around with it and also see what these new deep cuts will be. But I, those are, I'm always, I feel like with Civil War, we got stuck with a bunch of figures that just didn't translate out. Yeah. And these, these figures, they're way beefier than the Civil War pieces were. But the problem is, is the true. keywords were so limiting. Like you had to be Gene Gray School, higher learning. And we didn't get mm-hmm. any of those in X Men anime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Which I makes sense. We... I don't think it's that same time period, so that makes sense. No. But they have been more broader on keepers, it seems, recently, so I thought maybe we might, but yeah. at least the deep cuts are, are keeping it going. Yeah, they got the deep cuts, and then we've got the uh, Pixie in the Marvel set has that. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if Utopia is the other ones. Yeah, Utopia is the other one. Yeah. Yeah, and those are pretty mm-hmm. good. The Cyclops is really good. The Storm. Mm-hmm. Man, what has WizKids done with Storm? I mean, outside of Asgardian Storm and the LE, like, in-game X-Men set Storms. I mean, I guess you got the Storm Prime. But mm-hmm. well, just normal that. Storm, she's just, she's always so weak. Because isn't Storm an Omega-level mutant? Uh, yeah, she is. Like, we haven't really got, like, a, just a super powerful, like, regular storm that I know of, ever. Yeah, I mean, it, the, her strongest one is probably the uh, Asgardian one. And so at that point, you're saying, okay, it's because she has the hammer that she's stronger. And it's like, no, I mean, I think they just recently made her well, technically Omega level, but... I don't know if she was listed in Omega level, now that I think about it. Uh, I just I just googled in and it said um, that they basically ju- they've never really told what she has been, but just recently well, they've they've boosted her up to Omega level. In the powers of X in the House of X uh, that they just they named all the Omega uh, mutants, uh, 
And I don't think Storm was on that uh, list. Because uh, I just read that. And I'm pretty sure she wasn't in that. Maybe I'm wrong. Somebody can correct me. I may have forgot. Uh, I'm looking. Okay, so this is a, a thing. It has Omega level. And it lists a bunch of... It says Xavier Files, Cerebro. I don't know where this is from. Um, but this is from uh, six months ago or something. And it looks like a document maybe from a, a, a comic or something. And it lists uh, Jamie Braddock, Robert Drake, Iceman, uh, yep. Elixir, Marvel Girl, Jean Grey, Legion, Magneto, Proteus, Mr. M. Uh, and then it lists Storm. It lists okay. Exodus, Kid Omega, Powerhouse, um, Frank. Oh, Franklin, Franklin Richards, Franklin Richards, yeah. Uh, Vulcan, Gabriel Summers, and Hope Summers. It lists all of them as Omega level, and I think it. I think from what I remember, it's just she hasn't. I don't know. I haven't read enough Storm comics, you know, like to, to see no. Aurora like her at her full power. I think she's kind of treated a little bit like Iceman. You know, Iceman yeah. has been named as an Omega, but like he just never saw his potential and like never felt like he had potential. But then he finally was hitting the point where he's like, oh, man, I have like incredible power and like the ability to just I can freeze the molecules in your body from standing across from you. Like he just never hit that. So yeah. I, I wonder if that's what's kind of the. Yeah, it's just something that's kind of holding her back. Right. Like, yeah. In the cartoon, she always went down like really yeah. easy. Like she just like faint. And she was like falling fall to the ground <laughs> and, <laughs> and silly stuff like that. You know, like it just she just over like over overheated or something. Like I don't know. Uh, See, I, I I really she's probably one of my favorite X Men. Um, I've said it multiple times. If I ever won worlds for whatever reason, um, the character, the figure I would make. I know duo figures are kind of done. But I would make like mm-hmm. a switch clicks between yeah. her, her and um, Black Panther. Oh, I mean, yeah. they were married. They were married for a while, um, and just basically have it where she's the range damaging power. Switch it to him where he's the close combat, stealthy type power. Oh yeah. Have it have it like a hot girl, hot man type thing, but do it with Storm. And... Like what? That's really cool. I like that idea. Yeah, I just. Because, I mean, you don't see that. that they, I mean, I, I don't know how long they were married, but they were what, married for a while. I thought it was kind of the Queen of Wakanda storm they put out. Was it like, it was, like was it giant size X-Men storm that they um, did? Like, she they, had the, she, she was pretty good. And she had this power, like, when she was outdoors, she got more stuff. Uh, and... She did have, it was an Ellie. Um, there was an like Ellie a, one. You're talking yeah. earlier than that. Uh, yeah, I'm talking a lot earlier than that. Like, this is a super rare that I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm uh, going she back had, now. She had this crazy sculpt with, like, lightning on it and stuff. All right, so that wasn't Wakanda. Um, there's a super oh, rare from Giant yeah. Size. Yeah, it, yeah, Giant Size. But that was kind of, I think that was kind of the storm. Uh, maybe that's not the one I'm, that's what I'm thinking of is the Giant Size one. It has Fantastic Four. Um, yeah. It says Wakanda Deity Fantastic back then. Yeah. Yeah, Deity Fantastic Four, Hellfire Club, Morlocks, Ruler, and X-Men. The Weather Witch damage power. When Storm occupies a square of outdoor terrain, modify her damage and range plus one, and she possesses two targets. And it shows a picture of the the lightning coming like all out of her. Yeah. Like the, that's really cool. Yeah, she was a fun one. She had like nine range, like back then. Like <laughs> so she had like ten yep, range, nine and range, four yeah. damage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that's pretty good for just eighty six points. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, so um, the other segment, I think this is like one of the last segments we were going to talk about, um, is called Dr. Doom Story Time. So what we're going to do with Dr. Doom Story Time is I want to talk about some of the comics we read recently. Um, I relate all my comics to Heroclix, and the reason I'm reading them is based off of Heroclix. Uh, I generally like certain stories more than others. Like, I- I'm a big X-Men fan. Um, mm-hmm. I'm oh, and I should preface this. I mostly only read Marvel. I do read some DC bigger storylines. I just don't have a subscription to Cosmicsology or whatever it's called. So um, maybe one day I'll get into more DC stuff. But 
Yeah, like I'm behind on my like, only thing I like. Only thing I got on my pull list right now is like X Men and Amazing Spider Man and Avengers. Yeah, um, but I'm probably like five months behind in reading <laughs> Spider Man and Avengers, and I'm probably like two issues behind on Spider Man or so, or, or two three issues behind on X Men right now. Like I don't know, I've just things have been crazy. So I tell you uh, what, trying to keep up with Spider Man is crazy. There's oh, so man. many different stories. Like, I tried going back and reading the main story plots for Spider Man, and it's like, go here to Amazing Spider Man, go here to this Spider Man, go here to this Spider Man. It's like, hey, yeah. Doc, Doc Ock took over his body at some point. And I'm like, wait, what? When did that yeah. happen? Yeah, I just, I just read Amazing Spider Man, basically. I don't get the other book. Like, I can, if I, if I really need to get something, I'll get it, but I, I, I try to stay away from anything but Amazing Spider Man. I think, I think I've I... got every issue from issue 300 forward. <laughs> I think I stopped reading the the Spider Man comics in Marvel Limited when I read the storyline where I feel like Aunt May dies or almost dies every storyline, but it's the one where he yeah. was he was married to Mary Jane. Aunt May was going to die, so he made a deal with Mephisto. Mephisto. Mephisto, yeah, that's one one more day. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that, yeah. And it's like. Why would you do that? And it's like, yep, yeah, you forget that you're married. She doesn't know you were married either. It's all forgotten. It's like probably one of the most hated Spider-Man stories. <laughs> well, that makes wow. sense why I hated it. And I decided yeah. I wasn't going to read anymore for a bit. But at the same time, I like it. I mean, it's better than some of the really weird alternate stories they've made for Spider-Man. So, Right. And we'll say this. One story I did read, and this was based off of me reading the Absolute Carnage stuff. Uh, reading up to it. So I read the Venom series. I read a bunch of Carnage ones. The one time where Green Goblin uh, gets the Carnage symbiote mm -hmm. is an incredible story if you haven't read it. Like, it's one where oh. it's, it's really good. I hope oh, we get that a the Green Goblin. Was it the Red Goblin? Is that what that yeah, is? It's, I think yeah. it's the Red Goblin. Where he basically, he has none of the downsides to Carnage. Like, the, fi the, the danger from fire or the sound. Like, that doesn't affect him. He has just the benefits of the goblin and the benefit of, of the carnage. And so it's insane. He kills so many people. It's so great. But he just can't he just can't make himself kill Spider-Man or something. It was a really good story. I really hope we get that figure in the Carnage set, because that would be awesome. Because I think that's oh, a because yeah. he was very I won't say he was very overpowered, but he was very powerful. Like I forget. I'm blanking. I forget when I keep reading comics, I start blanking on what I read like a week ago because I've just started <laughs> reading new comics. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, let me tell I can tell you. Let me see. Red Carnage. Yum. Yeah. I think that's one of the ones I've, I do read that I have in my Spider Man. Or Red Goblin. Why am I looking, why am I looking Yeah. Up? Red Goblin. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's in my stack. I need to get to <laughs> yeah like Red Death yeah it, it's really good I, I won't spoil it too much I I didn't spoil it too much you know yeah. he gets the carnage so I won't go into too much of it but it is oh if if it's in your pull box you need to go get it it's really 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 good oh yeah Amazing uh, Amazing Spider-Man 798 yeah that's in my stack of stuff that I've got over here I need to get to <laughs> well when you find time this week check it out Definitely entertaining. I really hope, and if it's that new, I am confident if we're getting this Spider-Man Carnage type set, I oh, hope yeah. he's in it because he would look so good. He'd be so cool to just get this uh, to get this figure in it. Oh yeah. Um, well, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say a couple other things I was reading. Um, yeah. So. I was inspired by re uh, by the X Men set. I never really knew what Onslaught was. Like I knew oh, he was yeah. a cool character. Um, mm -hmm. I had heard of Red Onslaught from uh, what we were talking about the Inversion saga, yeah. but I didn't know original Onslaught. Um, which, if you didn't know, it's basically I won't spoil it. I won't spoil it. Um, but what well, it's how old is it? It's like twenty. It's, it's in the nineties, right? I think early two thousand. Okay, then I'll spoil it. It's been like twenty years. So it's Professor X. Like, we know it's Professor X. But basically, yeah. it was at a time period where he had basically not destroyed Magneto, but he pulled, like, mind-wiped Magneto, pulling the evil out of him. Uh, 
I didn't read that part of it, but I know that's what happened. And ultimately, a little bit part of that kind of sinister part of Magneto stuck with uh, Professor X. And so it eventually grew to the point where he had an alternate ego and he interacted. This is right after uh, Age of Apocalypse with X Men, Nate Gray. Um, he was formed into like an, he taught Xavier the astral form or pulled him into an astral form. So he knew how to do that. And by doing that, that basically created Onslaught. Um, really, really good saga to read because it, it basically knocks all the X-Men down on the peg. It, it knocks, I mean, the Avengers interact with them. Fantastic Four is after him because Onslaught's after Franklin Richards. Um, like it's a great, great story. Um, Knowing that's Professor X doesn't really ruin it because it, that's kind of shown at the very beginning anyway. Um, definitely check it out. It's a multi-comic series. Uh, just read a little bit about the awesome figure because, I mean, he's growing in the meta currently. Um, but he's just a yeah. cool... The, the, the way they did it in this set is also cool. Like, you can see now why he has the certain powers, the, the free mind control the TK abilities, like you could see yeah. that because I've read, you know, I know why he has what he has based off of reading the comics. And that's really one thing I I want to emphasize to people is, you know, get Marvel Unlimited. I know I keep hyping it, but being able to, like <laughs> he has the ability, uh, Onslaught can knock back characters that can charge, can use charge or combat reflexes. When Onslaught hits with a close attack, hit character unequips all equipment and drops any held objects. And after resolutions, he knocks back at hit character nine squares. Well, the yeah. title of that is Kill You, Kane Marco. What a splendid idea. And there's a big part of the story. It's not spoilerish or anything where he f basically takes down the juggernaut and basically makes him scared for a little bit because he's just able to just destroy him because you know, because they're brothers, essentially, or stepbrothers or whatever you want. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely check out the Onslaught series. Um, if you're looking for anything to read besides that, um, another good thing I read uh, besides Absolute Carnage, um, I reread. Have you ever read? Do you read any of the X Men? Like right now, I'm reading the main X Men book, and I just read like Powers of X and House of X. I used to read Astonishing X Men. Uh, I, that I, I is read. that was the one I was about to mention. Yeah, Astonishing X Men was a great book. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Astonishing, it's basically Astonishing X-Men 1 through 24, 25. It's the Joss Whedon series. It's when the he was writing X-Men. I'm sorry? Like the Break World, that saga? Like, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, it was so good. It, I, I, I've read it multiple times, and it's always just a good just a good read coming back to it. Because it's just it's a movie in a comic book. Just like the different twists and turns that they're able yes. to weave into... Because it's hard sometimes to weave an intric intricate story and just such few issues. And they do a really good job of building the characters and kind of weaving in and out. I definitely, if you're just getting, you know, you're hearing this, and you're like, I really want to get into comics now. One of the best things to read definitely is Astonishing X-Men 1 through 24, 25, I can't remember. Yeah, I think it's um, around that, yeah. I think, and I forget what year that came out. Uh, 2011, 20 something. Let me look it up. Um, yeah, it's, it's got to be back in the time. I think Beast was still like the cat looking beast back then. Yeah, uh, he was going, he, he was going yeah. feral. Like they, yeah, that, that was one of the things is he was afraid that he was losing his mind. So, yeah, and like they brought in like armor. She was kind of like the new Jubilee character. Yeah. Like Wolverine's like sidekick kid. Uh, yes, and, and I and I it made me wish. I don't. Do we have an armor? Yeah, we do. We got her back in uh, Giant Size X Men. I think, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm looking it up now to see if we've had one recent. I, I don't think so. I think she's the only one they've ever had of her, uh, if I remember uh, correctly. I'm like, yeah, it's like the Cyclops costume from that time frame was really cool. Uh, I thought. Oh yeah. And and it's just a, a, oh man I, I it's it's one of the stories I just come back to because it's not a not a long read it's pretty quick you can knock it out in an hour maybe or a little mm -hmm. less than that if you if you're not uh you know busy. there's even like a just like a motion comic of it like you can like watch too like I think ooh really yeah I believe so I, I can't remember where I saw it at uh you might Google it like uh, I'm pretty sure that there is like. Uh, you can 
that you can watch out there too. It's not like a full animated, but like you know, if you're you know, if I take panels from the comic and it kind of it's sort of animated, but it's sort of not. Oh boo! I just looked at the armor from Giant Size. She's real bad. <laughs> She's yeah. a super rare too. Oh, that's yeah. so bad. Oh, yeah. it's a shame when they do cool kit. Like she was super cool in that in that little series. Like. Yeah. And I know she's been she's been around going forward. She's like one of those perpetual X Men kids that never grow up. Like they're just perpetually yeah. always one of the students. Yep. I think that was like when they brought Kitty Pride. Or no, so Kitty Pride disappeared then, right? Because like she phased like a giant missile through the planet or something. That's like in that, that storyline. Yeah. That's yes. The yeah. Stuff. Yeah. She plays a huge part into it, in it because yeah. that's when she's finally brought back to the school. She's been gone for a while. And she, Emma invites her back, and there's always a beef between her and Emma. Um, so she's brought back to the school. That's actually the first panel is her walking back into the school because uh, Xavier's gone because of the whole uh, Krakoa, or not Krakoa, a uh, uh, Genosha thing. Right. So it's basically Emma's running the school with Scott Summers. And so it's those two beasts, Wolverine, and then they bring Kitty Pride. So. Anyway, yeah. definitely check it out. It's one of my favorite stories, and I'm, you know, I'm still a relatively new comic reader, but definitely, definitely worth it. Yeah, I guess if I'm gonna pick one, like what I'd read recently, it's really good. Like my top three things are like Spider Man, Captain America, and Thor. Like those mm-hmm. are my those are my comics. So like Thor of Realm was like the big Thor, yeah, uh, event of last year, and like basically. Uh, Malekith, the accursed dark elf, like leads all of the baddies of the ten realms, like to wage war to basically take over. And then, so he's taken over like like uh, like you know most of the realms. Then he goes on goes to Earth. Like basically, it's Thor and the Avengers are like trying to fight him off. Like you've got like there's frost giants and and trolls. And all this crazy shit, <laughs> and, and like the Punisher is like leading the Kill Squad to like fight off this stuff, and like uh, I mean, there's all kinds of awesome stuff that was in there. Like uh, Jason Aaron, I think, wrote that. Um, like all of his stuff is really good. And if you could get a set out of that, like a quick set out of that, would be totally. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I could. I don't know how well. Yeah, I mean we're due for it because the the the, the so the, the set yeah. coming in August yeah. is Spider Man and Venom Absolute Carnage. Right. Absolute Carnage happened last year, so mm-hmm. I can definitely see them maybe this time next year rolling out a Thor set. That's because we're yeah. losing Mighty Thor. Thor, yeah. So it, it could happen. Like, I mean, I I, do, I haven't read all of it. I've read the Venom parts because that was part of the Absolute Carnage. Is hey, read Venom's. Because uh, that's when Eddie Brock was kind of going back and forth with the Venom and having to deal with the symbiote thing. Yeah. Um, and he was he played a little bit of a part in that. Um, what could it be something that we see a summer OP event? It could be. I mean, it's big enough. It's like scale enough to do that. There was a lot of cool. Little, it was like a lot of cool little Avengers teams that were in that. You know, like Captain Marvel had her team where she had like Deadpool. And like Weapon H, we just got, uh, hmm. and it's because of Connex. And then like the Mac, like the he, Venom was part of that team, and uh, Captain Britain, Winter Soldier. Wow! Uh, like, like so the Punisher had his own little like kill squad that he was taking down. Uh, uh, some of these uh, Asgardian type threats, right? And uh, Loki was in it. Uh, Frigga. Thor's mother and uh, Odin and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Hmm. I mean, because we haven't heard anything about an OP kit this summer. I mean, I don't know if they have solicits I don't for know, like I, September or October yet, but I don't think they go out that far. But yeah, we have like sometimes they'll tell us that. Was is there like a is there like a is like an oh, open house a, or something? Alliance, like, it's Alliance Open House. Yeah, is that coming up sometime stuff. soon, maybe? Uh, I feel uh, like it, we already in the, had it. But I, think there's one, I want to say there's one in the spring, and maybe not, but that's usually when they like... Uh, when yeah, they it was in September. That. Usually it's in September. So we, got, we already had it a while ago, so they wouldn't have released that info yet. And we got a little bit of a peek at 
I mean, they're not. Man, we got a little bit of a peak of carnage, so I don't know if we're getting an OP kit this or an OP event. Maybe they don't. They don't. They don't focus on those like they used to. Like Regenesis was like last summer, but man, it just they didn't go ahead. I mean, it wasn't the, the trimmings and you know what they had before. Like War of Light was probably peak, right? Yes, and, definitely. And, and everything since then has just kind of been. Age on of a Ultron. Age slide. of Ultron wasn't bad. It was a drop. I would say Age of Ultron was great. It's just when you take War of Light, which was awesome, mm -hmm. and then you look at Age of Ultron, you're like, ah. But when you compare yeah. Age of Ultron to Regenesis, Civil War, the 75th anniversary ones, or not 75th, mm -hmm. but was it 75th? Or... No, no, not 75th. It was, it was the, the, the 15th anniversary of Heroes. 15th. Yeah, 15th yeah. anniversary. Like, it pales in compared, or Age of Ultron's awesome. Compared to those, because you got two uh, yeah. two different bricks. Ultron was super great in that. You got the grand prize was the Quinjet. You got the IDs. Like overall, Age of Ultron, and that was the set I came into the game on. Um, mm. To me, it was a really good store event. Like I really enjoyed it, and I played. Yeah. We did some mini War of Light stuff, so I've I've experienced War of Light, but. Well, I guess I don't know. I was I lived through all War of Light stuff and like all the way back to Infinity Gauntlet, you know, when they first started all that. Maybe that's why I'm like Jones and for like the, the, the it was just bigger. It was just a bigger thing back then. Like yeah, Genesis I mean, was just like yeah, I can take it or leave it. You know? I mean, what's what's sad is I mean it's been it'll be six years since the last big DC summer yeah. LP event. I mean, we had the we had that mini one with like Colossals. Was it, yeah. Wasn't that a thing at some point where we had a bunch of? They like, was kind of. That was pretty half-assed. I mean, they put out like a Giganto yeah. and then like a a Dormammu. You got like a one of the jets or something. Was it? Yeah, yeah, was uh, it the invisible? Not the invisible jet. Yeah, no, because no, it's still legal. Dormammu is still legal. So yeah, Deadpool jet, and invisible jet. Yeah, it was kind of lackluster. Yeah, yeah. Like, where's our crisis event? Like. Uh. I mean, why don't we have that? It's like the biggest DC event of all time. Like they've come back in comics to it like fifteen hundred times. Like, I mean, I just, from my understanding, it's just DC is not easy to work with, and they're very particular about what they want to do. And yeah, Marvel, Marvel's just like, hey, go at it, man. We got so many different licenses for so many things. <laughs> Whereas DC's well, like, we've got this one. We've got the main trinity. That's it. Well, like the big the big rumor now is that Marvel's gonna buy DC buy DC. So uh if they do, maybe we'll get a bunch of bunch more DC hero clicks. <laughs> oh goodness, Marvel buying DC. I wouldn't, that, wouldn't I don't that know how I, I don't know how I feel about that. Like Well then we can get like all that amalgam stuff everybody always wants that we can't get, right? Like Dark Claw and uh, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. I, I don't know. I don't think I'd want them to ever cross streams outside of those random amalgam events like kid they need to be separate but and i guess i feel the same way about it like i do with um when just recently when disney bought fox and so marvel got mm -hmm. fantastic four back yeah. like i wanted that combo because i wanted fantastic four back i wanted that i wanted the x-men to come back i wanted all of that to come back into the marvel universe but I didn't feel good about this whole monopoly that they were making. So it's like if Marvel buys DC, like, I don't know if I, I mean, that'd be cool if DC like now starts pumping out really awesome hero clicks, but I don't know for the sake of comics or, well, then again, if Marvel unlimited, they pop out a DC unlimited app. Yeah. All right. Then um, all right, never mind. You're, yeah. you're, you're, I'm warming up to this idea now. Yeah, they could be really good. <laughs> we might we might get a decent DC movie. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's just hope that this upcoming Justice League Unlimited set is good. I oh. I mean I've seen some of the point values and I'm I'm excited of potential. Um seeing some high points and some real low ones, like a ten point Superman, like a ten point Superman, I think just, that's gonna yeah. be a robot, like one of the drone ones or whatever. Um that was on like that Justice Lord Superman dial they showed, wasn't it? Like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he's in the black and white costume. But that, uh, that's another that's another thing. Like with comics, is just you know with these animated sets. I mean, I kind of want to go watch Justice League again and go watch Justice oh, League Unlimited. 
Uh, it's and it's so unfortunately good. it's not one I can watch with the kids. My kids started watching it, and I didn't realize how like some dark tones and some not a, like six year old appropriate things were on there. Mm. Um, yeah, I yeah, I guess there was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was. It's not terrible. Like, it's not like some of the new DC stuff that's out. Like the Harley Quinn thing I keep seeing. Oh, yeah. On. oh yeah, it's way better than any of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my kids just started watching it. Like, I was just like, okay, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Justice League of Limited, of course. It's cool, Superman. And then I started watching some, and I'm like, this is some scary scenes that I don't know if I want my, like, five-year-old or four-year-old to watch. So I was like, yeah, let's time out on that. You can go watch something else. But maybe now's the time to bust it out again and take a look at it and, oh, and, man, and, I, and prep. I'm so pumped for it. Like, I love that show so much. I want a good hot girl. I really want a good hot girl. And, and a question. I I just hope they don't do like Batman animated was great for the show, but the figures were kind of lackluster. Like they were yeah. on the weaker side, which is fine because that makes all Batman villains are that way essentially. Like if you're looking at the Penguin compared to like uh, Doctor Doom or something, it's like okay, you know, there's there's a power level drop off there, and they did work True. cohesively very well. Like Gotham City Underworld had a really good team and batman animated so I'm, I'm just hoping they don't i don't know i've it's one of those like i i don't ever get my hopes up for dc sets because i've yeah. always been underwhelmed like i was excited for rebirth and i was generally underwhelmed with rebirth um yeah batman I'm not... animated i was excited about batman animated and it was a great set i like batman animated yeah so. i do too i'm just teen titan sets in general from here clicks just don't do it for me <laughs> yeah yeah well, I, don't know. I don't know what it is about teen titan hero click set but man they just seem like they suck <laughs> i don't know i don't know why i don't know what's wrong with them but like starfire is really cool in this set and the, like black adam's really good and the shazam and the billy batson and then mr oz i could probably take or leave the rest of it <laughs> it's like whoever was it's like whoever you know talks to whiz kids about dc is just a real big starfire fan because she's oh, yeah. always good like she yes. we haven't had a coriander that's been Man, real, i oh. mean there may have been an old old one that's bad but like nah, she's been generally yeah. pretty good yeah the ellie coriander was so good <laughs> like the ellie is good the rebirth is good the t titans one is still pretty good the uh, the super booster one uh, from Teen Titans is eh, kind of meh. That's going back a yeah. little far though. But she has outsiders on everything, and outsiders is yeah, you know good. still it's... pretty pretty powerful even in today's world. So yeah. Sure. So yeah, so yeah. I mean, I just don't have a lot of hope for Justice League. I mean, I hope it's more like Batman animated because it was a good set. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I hope it's not like Rebirth and Joker's Wild was garbage. Like I think Joker's Wild is one of the worst sets they've done. Yeah, in a long problem. time. Like it's just one of just not a like some of the figures in it were cool to get. Um, but yeah. it's overall just not a. I, just, like, I mean, I love the Penguin. Like that Penguin is probably one of my favorite uh figures in hero clicks is the penguin that pops out the robo penguins that do multiple different things i'd love that figure but everything else like bizarro story-wise it's kind of cool but they're kind of not good uh, i haven't been wowed by dc set in like a while yeah like, like maybe the best one in that superman wonder woman was probably like yeah i don't know like every time i get a batman set it's kind of under Teen Titans set suck. And... I mean, what, War Light, to be fair. Well, no, War Light was really good, but it was also an OP set. It um, wasn't a regular release. That's true. Flash had its moments, but was kind of meh. Like uh, it I had. Enjoy... Yeah, I enjoyed the Rogues, but. I mean... Yeah, the Rogues are good. Trinity of Sin, a chase. Yeah, that was great. Good. I like Trinity of Sin over. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like the. I don't know. The Batman. I like. I like Batman as a character. I like Batman a lot. But like, I don't know. The click sets just don't. I don't know. They don't yeah. do it for me. I'm more of a Marvel guy though. But I did like Justice League Unlimited is like one of my favorite cartoons of all. Well, here's to hoping that it's going to be good and that 
you know, two months from now, yeah. we're not sitting there being like, man, does DC ever get anything right? Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, had a, we had a crisis set, like a new crisis. Yeah, hopefully. All right, Jason, I think that is going to probably wrap it up for this first episode. So usually in um, Clickstoff and Clickstoff Seven Sudden Death, we do a, um, a final thoughts. So instead, let's do a casual thoughts. Okay. So what are some genuine, you know, just some casual thoughts that you just want to let our people know before we sign off on this episode? Uh, like if you haven't got WWE figures and played with them, you can fun to play. Uh, just get some and try them out. <laughs> I I had so much fun playing Undertaker and like Tombstone, Nimrod, and like when we played State that was popper. It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we haven't really local group. We have WWE figures, but we haven't really bust them out into events yet. We don't. Oh. We're not as WD oriented as your your area is. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, we're all big wrestling fans up here. Yeah, yeah. So we we have not busted that out, but I definitely. I mean, I have the Undertaker and Eddie and a bunch of other ones, and I I can't wait to I can't wait to get the next set too in June because there's some there's some wrestlers I do like in that set. Oh, I mean, yeah. I like the ones we have, but oh, I like yeah, some I'm, of the new ones we're getting too. So yeah, I'm hyped for it. I need I need some more of the old guys in. In there too, but like we're getting Hulk Hogan, we're getting like yes. Bret Hart, Kurt Angle, like yeah, and Becky Lynch, like oh yeah, I'm ready, can't wait. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for um, our first episode of Clicks Off Casualties of War. Cacao. So uh, I think we'll just we'll just see you guys next time. You know, casual right. casual exit. So yeah. see you guys later. Later.